Creating a custom fully rigged character is hard. Animating it isn't easy either. What if you used Houdini to procedurally generate fully rigged characters and port them into Unreal Engine to get those fancy control rigs for animation? But why would you do that? You can create hundreds of different character rigs with a push of a button because that's one of Houdini's best features, being procedural. Combine that with Unreal Engine and it's one-click solution to creating control rigs for that same character we generate from Houdini. Imagine all that power. Let's create a modular rig for this character. This character was made in Houdini and exported out of Houdini and brought into Unreal Engine. So notice these axes. It is slightly different. The Y axis is pointing downwards, as opposed to this is the original character created in Houdini. So this is still in Houdini. You can see that this Y axis, it's green, it's pointing upwards. So this is the difference between Unreal Engine and Houdini. Unreal Engine uses a Z up left hand coordinate system. Houdini uses a Y up right handed coordinate system. So the Y is, is up for us Houdini users. In Unreal Engine, Z is up. So X is usually used for forward in Unreal Engine. And when you convert the character rig over from Houdini to Unreal Engine, this is what you get. So the, the Y is inverted. The Z is still in the same place, only because uh, I've configured the character rig so that the Z aligns with the bone connections. Because the X has to be perpendicular to the Z and the Y. So it doesn't have much of a choice there for this X. Now let's con let's create a control rig for this guy. So this is the skeleton mesh of this character. So just right click it, create, come down here. You'll see control rig or modular rig. The one that we're going to create is the modular rig. The modular rig is the click and drag one. The control rig will give you a flow graph where you can do a lot more fancy things with it feet detect ground or anything that you can code in blueprints sort of thing it has that system it has that flow graph to allow you maximum flexibility but it's a lot more complicated modular rig is literally click and drag so we're just gonna we're gonna start off with baby steps and we're gonna do a modular rig first okay that's where it gets us here Okay, it opened it in the other monitors. I'm gonna dock it over here. Now you'll see that it automatically loads this yellow uh, box or hexagon along with a yellow square and a yellow arrow. So this is the root bone and it automatically tries to guess where the root bone is. And that's where it places this hexagon control. This is called a control. So this is not the actual bone. And if we look in the rig hierarchy, if you don't find this panel here, you can come up to windows and click on rig hierarchy. Once you click on it, it'll open up a new panel for this. Now this may not be over here. It could be docked over here and anywhere on your screen. If you have a dual monitor, it gets a little complex. Sometimes it'll end up in the other monitor. So just be aware of that. Now, by default, it tries to guess where the root bone is and it attaches a root control rig. And that's what this hexagon thing looks like. If it ever gets it wrong, if it's if it's in the wrong place, you can always delete it. And it, it's these yellow things here, these yellow items under the rig hierarchy. So you can just delete it and just re-add your own root bone if it got it wrong. And there are cases where I've had issues with the default root control rig is that the size is off. Well, right now it's good. It looks awesome right now, but there are times when it wasn't. So I'll show you where actually you can fix the size of this guy. Now let's, you can click over here or you can click right on the viewport. So let's take the global, um, sorry, let's go to the module panel. I find it's much easier this way. Click the root, come to the details, and then you'll see root control settings, global control settings, and a body offset control settings. And that matches these three guys, global, root, body. So unfortunately, when you click on these individual control rigs over here under the rig hierarchy, you lose that UI. And we need that to fix the size. So come to the module, click this root. Um, let's fix the root control settings first. Expand this, come down to shape, expand it, 
come down to transform expand it so the scale is what I want to fix say it looks good right now but say that's not what I want so we can just go like uh let's go 10 to exaggerate oh I forgot to okay let's go put it back to five I'm gonna lock it so I can change all three axes at the same time uh, let's go 20 to exaggerate you can see that the arrow has now increased in size okay let's go 100 it's huge this is sometimes what happens when i first load my custom characters because they were created in houdini and there are these little issues that i get because it's a custom character but just to let you know this is where you can fix the sizing of the root control now that's just the arrow. Let's let's make everything larger just for a demonstration on how you can fix the sizing. Let's click the root bone again. Now that was the root control. That's the arrow. Now this is the global control. Expand this. Expand the shape. Expand the transform. Okay. Now I'm going to lock it. I'm going to go... Oh, that was 5 to 100. So this would be... 3 times 100. 350. My math is right. Maybe not. Two. okay that looks a bit better all right let's do the last one i'm gonna collapse the global control and the body which is the last that that last square here we're gonna have to make it a little larger okay lock this and i don't know 100 uh, i think it was 125 okay close enough but this is how you can adjust the size of that root of the root controls these yellow things are the root controls now that's not what i want because it was perfect as it was before so i'm gonna have to revert everything okay okay so we're back to normal now now we see this little circle here this is a socket so usually you need sockets in modular rigs in order to create control rigs and these over here are your control rigs and the one that we need here is the chain we're going to take this chain and we're going to drag it over to this socket. Why would I need a chain? Because this is a tail. So let's let's get that. That's the only one that really fits this profile. Drop it in. And it automatically tries to detect the start and end bone. Now the start bone is 0 0.0. So let's click a bone. Okay, I can't read it. Uh, I'm going to click this rig hierarchy and I'm going to dock it over here. Okay, so you... The first bone we have is the point zero, and that's this one over here, uh, modular, okay. Now, the last bone in the tail is this one over here, point 19, and that's where this socket was highlighted, this this thing was here, and it's automatically created by this chain. It automatic you Unreal Engine is smart enough to detect the end of the tail, because this is a pretty much really simple rig. If you have something more complex, it might not get it right. So you have to double check. Is your end bone actually the correct one that is automatically selected? And is your start bone? The start bone would probably be correct. It's probably the one that you drop it into. So this looks good for me. And I'm going to compile. Now you have to compile after making all those changes. So let's press this. Save. Click the save button. And it's actually ready to go. Ready to be used in your level. So let's go to the main tab here where I have a lot of experiments that i've been doing but try to ignore that and try to ignore the random strawberry <laughs> that's from a previous project now let's open this up now let's drag this modular rig that we were working on and drop it into the into the level into the scene and it automatically creates the sequencer and that doesn't create it it automatically opens it up and adds this modular rig that we created onto the sequencer for us along with the skeletal mesh this is the skeletal mesh and this is the modular rig now i'm gonna i'm i'm not gonna be using this animation tab so i'm gonna dock it down here so i have a bit more real estate now this is done automatically you you can't use the modular rigs without a sequencer now where are my controls there it is where's that fancy arrow though okay press g sometimes this happens if you find that this happens press g while your mouse is hovering over the viewport i find that it toggles the game mode which hides the widgets there are a couple of times that it refused to update the viewport and in that case i actually tried saving the sequencer and reloading back up and that solved it but usually it's just the game mode 
versus press G on your keyboard. Let's take the global control. Let's move it up and down. Okay, it works, sort of. It doesn't do much. It's not very interesting. Let's go back to that modular rig. We can actually add dynamics to this chain, which is very fun. So click the chain, come to the details. Now in this details panel, look for the, so under the default section, we want the dynamics. If we check this, Now it did something funny with the rest of the bone and this happens because the axis is not correct. So once we enable the dynamics for the chain bone, you'll notice that this is not correct. Like it's orienting it in completely wrong. And this has to do with the way that we created the custom character in Houdini. The orientations are not compatible with Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine is very picky when it comes to its orientations for character rigs. Let me pull up Houdini. Now this is the original custom character, this character that was made in Houdini and exported with these, with these settings. Now I didn't use the Unreal Engine export, but even if I did, it, it still wouldn't be right because I've made the Z axis to follow the bone connection. It, the Z axis aligned with the bone connection. And this carries on into this as well. Let me open up a skeletal mesh. I think we have to look at it this way so we can see the X. Okay, so this is the y, uh, y axis pointing downwards. The Z axis is pointing this way. I know there's a green highlight, so it's really hard to see. But it, it's the green highlight is overlapping the Z axis. It's actually right here. And the X axis is over here. It's keeping the Z axis because I've told Unreal Engine, because I've made my rig that wherever the bone connects to, the direction of the bone connection needs to match with the Z axis. So it's trying to follow that to the T. That doesn't sit well with the dynamics in Unreal Engine. It doesn't know how to interpret it. Now this will still work sort of. So let's see what happens. I'll show you how to fix this. Come over here and you can see, okay, let me drop this. I'll drop it again. Okay, we're gonna drop our modular rig. That's the one that we just created. Drop it in. Okay, it orientates it incorrectly. But let's let's go with it and let's see what happens. Well, it's doing something wacky, right? If you can see very, let me turn down. Oh, there we go. Okay, pick this again and I'm gonna go. So you can see the waviness. So orientations are completely off. The mesh is not, it, it's just turning around. It's, it's not following it. And that's because of the orientations of how the orientations were created for the custom character. Let's just delete all of this. Well, okay, before we do that, let's go to the Houdini. This, the Z axis, it doesn't, Unreal Engine does not like the Z axis pointing in the aligning to the connection of the bones. We need the X axis to be there. So when I was creating my skeleton, the rig doctor here, well, let's go here and visualize. I explicitly told it to follow the Z axis to follow the bone connections. So that's what it's doing here. The Z axis follow the bone connections. Now we're gonna take this and tell it, use the X. So now it's using the X. And Unreal Engine will be a lot more happier with this. So let's turn it around. Now the Z points to the side. So really it's, it's, it's just flipped it over. Okay, let's go back with the same settings. I'm gonna export it again. I'm gonna call it something else. Let's call it 4, D4. So I've made a lot of versions. So let's save it. Let's go back to Unreal Engine and let's just delete this. So, or actually we can just keep it here. I'm just gonna have to delete the sequencer though. Okay, let's just bring this all the way down like next to the strawberry. Okay, let's come here. Let's create another folder. Four. I've been doing this for a while. Okay, so this is the one that I just exported, D4. I'm gonna click and drag it into Unreal. Import, and those are default settings. Now let's take a look at the skeleton mesh of this D4. So let's close D3. We don't want to see this. This is the skeleton mesh of D4. Click this. Huh? It looks the same. What is that? Oh, shoot. Oh, over here. Oops. Oh, sorry. So I missed something before when we export. Let's go back to Houdini. So yes, this is correct. The problem is um, I forgot the root bone. So this is fixing it for all the tail bones. There's another section over here for the root bone. The root bone is not 
as you can see over here, it's not lining up. The, the root bone is still pointing in the old orientation. So I forgot to fix that. So let's come over to orient. Okay. Now you can see here that the X is one over here. Well, now we need it over here. We need the reference vector, which is what it's going to align with the bone connection. We need it here. The X axis to follow the bone connection for the root bone. This is only for this, this root bone over here. Because I've, I had to add the root bone separately. The tail has its own procedural setup in Houdini. I'll have a more detailed explanation in the provided uh, project files for the perk members. This video will focus only on exporting your custom control rigs into Unreal Engine. So where the biggest issues comes with the orientation when you're doing the character rigs. So that's what we're going to focus on. So one over here and then zero out the Z. Okay. Now this should be all fixed. And you can see that they all line up, including the root bone all the way to the tail. Now let's go back and export it one more time. Okay. So I'm just going to overwrite D4. Save it. Over here, I'm going to have to um, import it one more time. So if I go to D4, let's delete that. All right. D4, let's import it. This is the one that we just created, that we just exported. Let's drop it in. Import. Now let's open up the skeleton mesh. Dock it up here and let's take a look. Okay. So now the axes look a lot better. The Z axis points this way. The Y axis points down. The X follows the bone connection. And that goes throughout the whole rig. This will work a lot better with the dynamics. And let's let's but we have to redo the modular control. So let's let's recreate it. Uh come to the skeletal mesh, right click, create modular rig. Now let's double click this. We're in here. Now we have the root bone, sorry, the root control. I'm gonna click this chain and I'm gonna put it to the socket. So this is what will control the tail, all the tail bones. So here, everything looks good. Now let's enable the dynamics. Now select your chain bone over here. Select it. Come to the details and search for dynamics. Okay, here it is. So under the control settings, dynamics. Enable this. Okay, it, we're not getting that weird orientation. So that's a good start. Oh, but it's also prompting us to compile. So let's click the compile. Let's save. Click the save. Now it should be ready to be used in our scene. So let's come over here. That's the old one. So let's hide that. Uh, click our modular rig. That's what we created. So you can see these little star here. So because I haven't done a save all. So let's go to file and save all just in case. Click this modular rig and drag it into our scene. And that's the thing that we just created. It'll automatically load a sequencer. And I'm not going to be using this animation tab. So I'm going to click and drag it down here. So I have more real estate on the screen. Now let's give this a try. Now let's click these little widgets or these control rigs and then move it up and down. Yay. Now we got it. So orientation is very important. Now there's different ways of controlling these. Now this one is very cool because this is sort of like a second root. It'll make it easier when you need to like pivot rotate. So you can pivot rotate here. And if you wanted to rotate here, so the pivot comes really handy with this root. This is a nice design. And if you want to reset th these positions, you can come over here and just reset these. Set. Okay, just gonna put zero. There we go. And it's reset. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.